Veronica, it's so great to meet you. Thank nice you for sitting down you. with me today. No problem. I want to talk a little bit about your career here at Vanderbilt and what it takes to be a champion. So let's talk about your 2023 season. SEC champion the discus, third place in the shot put, but back to the discus setting a stadium record, first team all SEC in the discus, NCAA East Regional champion in the discus and the shot put, 2023 Spring SEC Academic Honor Roll, finished her bachelor's degree, transferred to Vanderbilt, completed one master's degree, is working on a second master's degree. You've already competed at the Olympic trials. You've competed for Team USA in the World Championships in 2021, so now it's 2023. And now you're headed to Budapest for the Track and Field World Championships to compete for Team USA again. Yes. You're headed to the World Championships in Budapest next week. That kind of drive and discipline hits different. Tell me how you stay focused. Um, honestly, just taking it day by day, um, especially during the school year, just kind of like going down the list of like to do's and like, you know, just getting through the everyday of like what to do. Um, but also trying not to stay like super hyper focused all the time just so I avoid like burnout. I think that's just been really helpful in being able to lock in when I need to. So you've transferred to Vanderbilt and um, I've read your stats. And since you've got here, you've made a big jump. When you got here, you're throwing 56.73 meters and your PR right now is 63 meters 51. Now, I want y'all to understand that's a 22 foot jump since she's been here at Vanderbilt. That's really impressive. Talk to me about what you've learned since you've been here. Definitely just having a more elite mindset and having a different group of training partners has definitely helped a lot. Everything is so different. Like, I can't even reiterate that enough. <laughs> um, having such a big jump required a lot of sacrifice, um, as you probably know. Definitely everything in the, from the weight room to the track to the, um, to the ring has been different in just a completely positive way. And I've had to up the intensity, up the antics a little bit, um, but it's been totally worth it. Looking back on it, it just seems crazy that I've come so, so far in like not that long of a time. And I'm just hoping I can keep going for as long as I can, you know? Right. At your previous institution, you were on all the all-time lists. Here at Vanderbilt, you're already breaking records. And you seem to get it done no matter where you go. You were the youngest athlete to finish in the top 20 in the world last year at the World Championships. And you were thrown amongst the best of the best. But also something very special about Vanderbilt is Coach Kovacs. So tell me what it means to you to be one of the best, training and being coached by one of the best. I mean, I really came to Vanderbilt. One of the main reasons I came here was because of the coaching staff, you know, um, not even just Coach Kovacs, but Coach AT, um, Coach JB, all of the staff are very helpful. Um, but even working directly under her, she's had a stellar resume with getting people to where they want to be at in the sport, you know, so she, it, her herself has been um, amazing in the sport. She coaches her husband, Joe Kovacs, which is just one of the top 1% who you'll pretty much ever see in the sport, you know. Coming here to do that was like what I wanted and we work together every day to like make sure that happens and I'm just very, you know, um, blessed to be able to have um, a coach like her and be in a position I am to do that. I don't want to get you out of the mindset, you're getting prepared for the World Championships, but we also know that the Olympics are coming up next year, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. You've been, you've already been to the trials mm -hmm. and now you're on Team USA. And I just want to let everyone know the significance of the Olympics, right? There are 331.9 million people in the United States. And at the two, the 2020 Olympics or 2021 Olympics, there were 613 US athletes out of 300 and 30 plus million people. So that is a big deal. Yeah. That's a big deal. Has your dream always been to make an Olympic team? Of course, you know, ever since I started the sport, it's been kind of like a far reaching dream. Everybody, I think everybody dreams of being an Olympian and whatever they're doing, you know? <laughs> um, but, you know, definitely at my last Olympic trials, I was like 17th coming off of my college career. And just being able to be in a different position in such a short time is very inspiring to me. Although you said it's like 600 something athletes on the whole Olympic team, it's only 139 going to Budapest. So even that number is like pretty shocking to me. And I know that even like my position now, I just, you know, may or may not be putting me in, uh, in position to make the team next year. So I just want to do everything I can to put me in the best position um, to be able to make that team and make my dream come true. I think so we have some things in common. I competed in the SEC. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to win a discus title and I was fortunate enough to be on Team USA. Mm -hmm. And I competed in the hammer, shot put and discus, yeah. but I had most success in the hammer, right? But my mo favorite event is the discus. It's the dynamic, it's the speed, it's like the good throw coming off of the tips of your fingers. Yeah. So tell me about your best throws and how they feel. 
Man, I feel like one word to describe it would just be finesse. Like, I like discus in that you don't have to like try and muscle it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's different than shot and maybe hammer. I've thrown hammer like twice in my life, but mm -hmm. it just feels so delicate sometimes. Like, it's very volatile. Like, one pull will make it go the whole opposite direction of what you want. The wind can mess it up or help you. But it's just something that I've learned to like, play with over time, you know, and I just feel like it just feels natural like when a good throw happens, you know? So let's talk about some of your meet day habits. What do you do to get ready for a meet? Do you have a favorite pair of tights, a favorite singlet, a favorite pair of socks or shoes? I have a little routine for like pre-meet day, I guess. I like to do my makeup, do my hair, stuff like that. Definitely listen to music. Music is like a really big thing for me. So I gotta have the perfect playlist. I have like two or three playlists that depend on like what I'm doing that day. So if I'm doing shot, it's one playlist. This is a different playlist. What's that hype song? What gets you going? Oh my you, goodness. You warming up around the track. What's the <laughs> hype song? It's not one particular song, but artists. I, I really rock with Future. That's my main man right there. Um, <laughs> and he's a very good hype man too. Who's another one? G Herbo, Big 30. Yeah, those are probably like top three. We can tell we can yeah. be like 30 years apart because I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Who's yours? Who did, who, what was your oh, my like? favorite song, and I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, it was like um, Never Scared. I can't remember the artist, no, but it was a song called Never Scared okay. and We Ready by Archie. Okay. If you, to this day, yeah. if you put We Ready on by Archie, I don't care where I am. You about to get ready we to throw get, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gonna get hyped. Let's bring it all back to the World Championships. You're leaving, you said you're leaving on Monday. Mm -hmm. What are you looking, um, what are you looking forward to most? Ah, just the gen like the overall opportunity. This is gonna be my first time in Europe, so I'm very excited for that. Just to see all of the people that I know, like I've been able to be, uh, meet a whole bunch of different throwers, sprinters, jumpers, um, just athletes in general, and even the staff. Like I was talking to my mom the other day, um, the team throws coach actually, I she kind of got me started in throwing. Like a long time ago, my mom put me in her throwing camps when she coached at App State. Um, her name's April Smith, and she coaches at Fresno State now. But, Hi, April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so it's pretty exciting to have her there too getting to room with other collegiate athletes and everything. It's just super exciting just to see like the broad spectrum of athletes there, like the young ones like me and then the older ones who are like already pro and like the ones I look, look up to. So it's pretty cool. Well, let's talk about, you said the ones you look up to. Tell me who are some of your role models. Of course, Joe, because I throw with him like all the time. I see him all the time. Danielle Dodge, she's a Jamaican shot putter. Mm -hmm. Love her. All the top dogs, I guess, like Chase, Maggie, Jess Ramsey. I feel like the throwing community is so tight knit too. So you get to know everybody and everybody's pretty cool. So it's interesting to see like how they, you know, compete and live their life on social media. And then when you meet them, it's just like, it's, it's kind of different, but it's super cool to see like, you know, they're just people and how you interact with them. And just to see like how they train, how they work, how they talk, you know, mm -hmm. it's all pretty cool. But definitely like, I guess my biggest role model is like my mom, of course. So nice, <laughs> nice. yeah, she's definitely not like a th in the throwing aspect, but just generally like overarching in life. Um, yeah, I would say my mom is probably the biggest one. I learned after reading up about you, your mom is a doctor, mm -hmm. and we know you're here at Vanderbilt, and education yes. is very important to you. Okay. Any aspirations to follow in her footsteps? Yeah, I, the whole, I was pre-med, you know. Um, my undergrad is in health science, my first master's in biomedical science, so, and I'm doing um, human development now. So I think I've got most of the check boxes checked off for med school, but it's just kind of a matter of time to see if I like, kind of go that route or not. <laughs> I would encourage you to enjoy the World Championships, yeah. enjoy the time you spend making the Olympic team. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk it into existence. Yes. Making the Olympic team and take full advantage of the time you have. If you have any questions, you can ask me too. Oh man, I didn't write anything down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write them down. Well, what was your experience at the um, 2000 Olympics? Like, how was that for you? Oh um, man, it was awesome. I think as you're growing up, you're just doing what you think, what your coach asks you to do, what your coaches tell you to do, you're doing that. And you are training with the focus of like getting better and winning, right? It was awesome because it was the first time the hammer was in the Olympics for women. Oh wow. Right? And yeah. I, at that time I was the American record holder and I had won the trials. So it was just so awesome to be there. When you think about the how small, we talk about the small knit group of Olympians, period. Mm -hmm. And then you're amongst the best in the world. We lived in the village with amongst the best in the world. It was an amazing experience. Right. So I think when you look back on it, you're like, did I do that? Yeah. And you like look at your, you look at your own resume and like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Play seven. So it was a great experience for me. So how was it going from your college experience into like a more professional setting? Like what was your transition like? Yeah, um, it was tough. 
The transition was tough. I think the best thing that I did was kind of stay in a college setting because I went right from undergraduate to grad school. I think I'm um, training on a campus and I lived in a small, a smaller town. So training on a campus and being there really allows me to focus. I think when you are around other college students and you're still in school, it does allow you to maintain your focus. And as right. you know, you can't do this without discipline and focus. Yeah, yeah. So I think that transition to me was really, was great because I was still a, on a college campus and in that like intense training atmosphere. That's okay. really, really important. Yeah. So then how, how do you, what is your opinion on like the track world then versus like now? Like are you still, very, you're very much more into it now, um, I guess, just in a different way. Um, I think I'm into it as a as a spectator, and I think it's great when I watch track and field on television because you know, regardless of the, of the event, mm -hmm. you know what those athletes have gone through, right? right. Yeah. And so um, when they're answering their questions and they have passion about it, and they're really talking about what it is if they won or if they're like being gracious in defeat, mm -hmm. you can I can feel that, mm -hmm. and that's what I still love about watching sports and being involved in track and field. Yeah. It's been great to sit down and talk with Thank you. Thank you. Um, great luck this week in. Budapest Thank and you. safe travels on, on your journey there and I wish you the best of luck as you train to make the Olympic team in 2024. Thank you so much Don.